In our last lesson about split plot designs, we're going to want to look at this agricultural experiment example. Here's the data where again, we are in a split plot design where we had two factors. We had fertilizer, which was the hard to change factor, which made us want to do a split plot design. And then we had the variety of soybeans, which was the easy to change. So that's our subplot. Replication also, um, could have wrote farm here, so farm one, fertilizer one, and then your variety. There are different ways you could have randomized. And what I mean by different ways you could have randomized is that instead of having A1 here and A2 here, it could have been A2, A1. So that's why I said a possible randomization. Same idea here is if we re-sampled th one through three, this could have been different. Um, our randomization, for example, has been looking something like this, where we have a block for our farm one, block for farm two, block for farm three. We apply our fertilizer one to a whole plot, then we apply fertilizer two to the other plot, and then we apply our variety of soybeans. So at each farm, we have a complete replication or complete set of treatments. Okay. Now, Let's look at if we were to put this data into R or jump, let's see what we would get out of it. And while this looks a little bit messy, it will help us after we go through it. So let's recall that our statistical model looks like this, where our row is our farms, or is it going to represent our farms? Our alpha is going to represent our fertile. Lizer. Our delta is our going to be our whole plot error. Our beta is going to represent, oh, let me slide that down for you guys. Our soy bean variety. Our alpha beta is going to represent the interaction between fertilizer and soybean. And then we have our error term at the subplot level. Okay. Um, here we have the output for jump and R. Um, something to notice first is that these results and these results are the exact same. I just had to split it up because drawing all these arrows on one picture got very ugly. And I want something clean for y'all's notes. Also notice um, my R users, or my jump users, pardon me, my jump users, I accidentally made farm random. That wasn't supposed to be like that. Uh, That's a simple uh, little error. But in the case of random or fixed in here, it doesn't really matter. The reason why it doesn't matter is because farm, which it represents our row K, isn't going to be tested. Um, so we are not going to be looking at this F or P value or really any of this. The thing is, is we need to include farm because it's a block. Um, just like when we were doing a CRD versus an RCBD, we needed to include that block because it is going to impact the sums of squares, the MSC and the error terms for the rest of the design. So we need to include it because we're treating it as a block factor, but we're not going to be looking at this analysis or this term. Our next term we want to figure out is our alpha, okay, so our whole plot. So we know in our case, our whole plot term is our fertilizer. So we're going to look here, and in order to test, we're going to be looking at this F ratio and this P value when we're testing at the whole plot level. Okay. Our next term that we want to be able to pull out of our analysis is trying to figure out where our whole plot error is. And that's going to show up here in the farm fertilizer error. What I'm going to do though is I'm going to scroll down here to this plot. Same thing, same analysis right here is going to be our delta i kind of term, i, k. Okay, 
notice that it's the what we're looking at is the block whole plot interaction. So farm was our block, fertilizer was our whole plot, and it's going to be random. This is going to be our error term at the whole plot level. Okay. If we recall back to a randomized complete block design where the treatment block interaction was used for our error term for the degrees of freedom. And so this is kind of the similar idea. And what's important here is this term right here because it's going to be our whole plot error. So what this is going to be is our MSE whole plot. Our users pointing to the same thing. What we're not going to worry about is the F or the P value. We're just using this random term to get the MSE, which we will then use for um, our variance component estimation. The next term we want to be able to identify, if we go back to our model, is our soybeans, um, which is here in variety. And we will be looking at this F ratio, which is right here in this P value when we go to test in a moment. Then we want to also find the interaction, which is right here, which is fertilizer cross variety. And we will be looking at the F slash the P value for that. In our case, our fertilizer and variety was or are fixed effects. So we would want to look at the interaction term first and decide if we can move to fertilizer or variety next. Our last thing that we want to be able to identify from our ANOVA tables and output is the subplot error. So if we scroll back down to this plot where we're talking about the errors, for my jump users, your M S E of subplot is right here. Again, you're not using those Fs. All you're going to use this table for is the MS of the subplot. For my R users, it's down here in the residuals. Okay. Now, with that laid out for us, let's go look and test and figure out what our conclusions are for our agricultural example. So again, we're in a fixed effect case. So we want to test our interaction first. Is there an interaction um, or no interaction? We go back. Our p-value is going to be greater than 0 0.05. Where did this p-value come from? We're going to scroll back up and find right here. So our p-value for our test of interaction is 0.943, which is greater than our significance level of 0 0.05. So we're going to fail to reject. So we say that there is no interaction. And so we can look at our main effects. For factor A, we have a p-value of 0 0.024, where this p-value for our factor A, which is our whole plot, comes from, if we scroll back up here, coming from right here, okay? Um, we can, uh, from our test, we see that fertilizer does have a significant effect on our yield. We can also continue our analysis to looking at the factor B or the subplot. In this case, we got a p-value that was less than 0 0.001. This p-value is going to come from this red box right here. And so we're gonna reject our null. And so soybean variety has an effect on yield. So we had just went, uh, went through and tested all these. Maybe something, another part that we would, might wanna do is look and estimate our variance components. So our sigma squared epsilon and our sigma squared delta, our variance within the subplot and our variance with, between the whole plots. How we do that is by looking at our ANOVA table and pulling off the values. So recall our MS of our subplot is located here for my jump users and here for the R users. And that's as simple as pulling off the number and keeping that. 
our variance for our whole plot is a little bit more dip, um, difficult in the fact that we have to use a formulation. So we need to find our MSE of our whole plot and our MSE of our subplot, and then divide by however many blocks or replications if you're in a replication case. So we pull off our MSE for our whole plot here for jump here for R. We subtract our MSE of our subplot, divide by three. Here, notice we got a negative. So what we do is we would assume that the variance is zero and negligible. Um, in the remaining videos for lesson 12, I will show you how to put this into jump or R so that you can get these results yourself.